And we start with our tale of the tape, brought to you by Dave and Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. We start in the welterweight division, Big John with Tyler Ray and Seth Bass. Both guys are big, strong guys. That reach advantage that Seth Bass has, that's the difference. With the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Sanford Pentagon here in Sioux Falls as tonight Miller Life presents Bellator MMA. The action in the prelims now gets underway with three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at six foot one weighing in 170.8 pounds. His professional record, four wins, two losses. He fights out of Omaha, Nebraska, presenting Seth Bad Boy Bass. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot weighing in 170.4 pounds. His professional record early on stands at two and one. He fights out of Boca Raton, Florida. Introducing Tyler Ray. And the referee in charge of the action, Mike Beltran. So Mike Beltran, our referee for this fight at 170 pounds. Seth Bass and Tyler Ray, part of the Hard Knocks 365 team. Ready to fight, ready to fight, head on, let's go. We are underway. Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Seth Bass in the blue gloves, Tyler Ray in the red gloves. His training partners include Logan Storley, who we will see later tonight. Michael Chandler, Jason Jackson, who will fight tonight. Robbie Lawler, Luke Rockhold, Kamaru Usman. Trained by Henry Hooft and Greg Jones, Big John. That is not a bad crew at all. Not bad as far as the credentials of that crew. You learn a lot. Tyler Ray is a very big, strong guy. Seth Bass is going to want to utilize his boxing, keep him on the outside, keep him at range. He does not want Tyler Ray getting inside on him. Seth Bass pretty big for this division, isn't he? He's very big. And you look at him go, how does he weigh 170 pounds? He's huge. Big swing and a miss by Tyler Ray. Been working on his stand-up, and as I say that, looks for the takedown. Kind of lost that takedown as far as he blasted it. Good change of level, but went to his knees and lost a lot of the power that he had with that takedown. That's why he's now up against the fence. Okay, I'm gonna wait, well, I did wait a minute and 20 seconds to say this. Tyler Ray was playing hockey and started <laughs> training in Cincinnati with George Gurgel at age 14. He did, man, he changed completely from a hockey player into an MMA fighter. You know, just went to one class and said, you know what, this is what I wanna do. I asked George Grigel about him. He said, good kid, good looking guy. That's deep right now, but he's defending it well, but he cannot let it get extended out there. And he's out. And into side control. So good job early by Tyler Ray. Nice attempt at the arm by, by Seth. He's not, he's trying to show I'm, I'm more than a stand-up guy. I'm gonna go and I am gonna try to put you in submissions if you take me down. Right now, Tyler Ray needs to utilize the position that he's got. This is side control. He can do so much damage here if he's just smart with, with the movements and where he sets his body. Seth Bass, 10-0 as an amateur with only one fight going the distance. Tyler Ray did wrestle in high school and in college in Cincinnati. Training in South Florida now, as I mentioned. See, and right now, Tyler is trying to figure out what he wants to do. He, he knows he can control Seth on the ground, but as he's trying to start to do things, Seth is moving, which is upsetting his balance, and he's going back to control. Now he went right to mount. Beautiful movement by Tyler Ray. Seth able to get it back to half guard. Nice elbow. And it's and funny, hammer fist. You can see even right now, he's more comfortable in half guard than he is in side control. We'll say that side control is a more dominant position, 
but in half guard, he's pinching down that leg, and he's feeling comfortable, and he's landing big shots, which are going to do damage to his opponent. Back to full guard, so nice adjustment made by Seth Bass. We have seen many a fighter who are very comfortable in half guard. Big oh, elbow shots. That's going to be it. It is all over. Nicely done, Tyler Ray. Victorious in his Bellator debut. Vicious elbows. Yeah. Wow, take a look at the finish, Big John. He hit him with huge elbows. Check out this elbow coming right here. That one's not the bad one. Here it comes. Boom. Off the arm, but it's still hurting. Look at straight punch. He's hurt. Another straight punch, and then goes back to trying that land. Fighter goes out, comes back, and goes back out. That elbow hurt him huge, and this is where people don't realize sometimes you'll get hit by something that doesn't look that bad but the effect that it has on your brain, you cannot understand until you're that guy there. You see Mike Beltran coming in to stop the fight. The fighter is not reacting. Great stop of the fight. Big, huge shots by Tyler Ray. That is what I'm talking about. In that position of half guard, he can put some power on his opponent. Half guard and then full guard, but still, Tyler was strong enough and didn't even have to posture up that much, partner, to be able to finish this fight. No, and it's all into the positioning of where his head is at the level of his opponent's head. He's coming straight down. He's not bringing those elbows or those punches forward. They're coming down, utilizing gravity. It's all the power he needs. So a great performance for Tyler Ray and his first career win by knockout. Michael C. Williams to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Mike Beltran steps in, waves off. The contest officially three minutes, 30 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, Tyler Ray. The winner by knockout. Three minutes and 30 seconds into round number one, Tyler Ray. Tale of the Tape brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. And no, that is not a typo. Willie Whitehead weighed in at 200.2 pounds. He weighed in at 200 pounds for a middleweight, which is 185. Romero said, I don't care, I want to fight. That is way overweight. That is uncalled for. Romero's at a big disadvantage, but he still wants to fight. That is not anything close to virtually <laughs> identical, identical <laughs> Michael C. Williams. For those Bellator fans joining us around the world live on the Bellator MMA Global app, we welcome you to Sioux Falls as the action continues now in tonight's prelims, three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at five foot seven, weighing in 200.2 pounds. His professional record stands at two and two. He fights out of Fort Dodge, Iowa. Introducing Willie Rose Whitehead. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot ten, weighing in 185.4 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated early on at two and zero. Oh, he fights out of Hutchinson, Kansas. Romero showing up. Cotton in charge of the action. Referee Bobby Wambacher. Bobby Wambacher will be our referee, and Big John White. We kind of had fun and joked about Willie Whitehead and what he weighed in at. There is a reason why this fight was able to take Willie, place. Well, with the, Willie, the rules and regulations of the South Dakota Athletic Commission, they have a 10%. If the fighters are within 10% of each other in weight, they can allow the fight to go on. That is a 10% difference. When you're looking at 185 to 200, he could have been even heavier and they would still allow it as long as Romero Cotton wanted to take the fight. All right, that clarifies why this fight is happening right now. Fight Clock, brought to you by Miller Lite, great taste, and only 96 calories. Romero Cotton in the red gloves, Willie Whitehead in the blue gloves. Romero Cotton is such an interesting story. He is such a good wrestler, has a great wrestling pedigree. 
comes from being in trouble when he was young in his youth and everything that he has done from that point going to college graduating the job he did as a wrestler he is a great story and he's going to be a great fighter three-time ncaa division two national champion at 197 pounds four-time all-american won 10 state championships in three different sports foreign wrestling at hutchinson high school in kansas John, you did your homework on this one, so thank you for sharing. No Four in football and two in powerlifting. I want to know how they had powerlifting. They never had that when I was a kid. You would have won, too. <laughs> it does tell you something about the athleticism of Romero Cotton. Look at that. You see that level change right there? Just drops down, drives in, puts his opponent on his back. Now that weight difference, it doesn't matter. Both of Romero Cotton's professional fights and professional victories, a 2-0 fighter, have been inside the Bellator cage. A split decision in his first fight, and that was basically a survival victory, and he did that based on his wrestling ability, and then a rear naked choke win against Justin Reeser. You're exactly right, Mike. That first fight, he actually fought a guy, Rodriguez, very difficult fighter, good submissions, and he went after Romero Cotton with a lot of different submissions. He muscled his way physically, athletically, got his way out of a lot of those submissions and won the fight, but it's the progression. You're seeing a progression in Romero Cotton. Look what he just did in this fight, going into side control now, trying to open up Willie Whitehead. This is what we're looking for out of the fire. Steps over the arm, now he can open up with shots, good elbow. This is what we're looking for as he grows as an MMA fighter. Trains at AKA in San Jose, California. Bob Cook, Javier Mendez, and that great gang of fighters. Congratulations to Daniel Cormier. There's a couple good guys there. Couple good Some guys. double double champ, something like that. Uh, DC is uh, really put on a show. Congratulations to our good buddy DC. Did pretty well in that <laughs> strike force organization yeah, too, didn't he? I think he won something. Yeah, a okay. couple of. Uh, Eat a couple big heavyweights during those days as well. So Cotton in control so far, first of three five-minute rounds. You kind of mentioned the background, a great story of a young man who showed the true love for his mother, and now he is a true prospect at 28 years old in this sport of MMA. Willie Whitehead trying to get off of his back, but putting himself actually in a worse position. You'll kind of notice in with what Romero's used to, he's gonna, he's gonna hip ride. Notice his hips being back on top of Willie Whitehead's hips. That's to keep him heavy on top of him. That's pure wrestling. It's not the norm that you're gonna see with a guy coming in there and getting hooks to keep himself on that back. Willie Whitehead, orthodox stance, is his normal base, but he will switch his stance back and forth. Two and two is a good shot. Oh, those hurt him. Yeah, he's in trouble. It's it over. is all over. Romero Cotton moves to three and zero oh inside the Bellator cage. Shown up. Big knee leads to the finish. That knee hurt him really bad, but it was the punch that set it up. But once he started in with the knees, you can see Willie Whitehead cannot take all those. Here comes the punch. Look at this right hand straight down the pipe, hits him right in the middle of the face. That stuns Willie Whitehead, and that's what sets up the knees. And here's our finish, hammer fist coming down. Bobby Wambacher, the referee, has no choice but to stop this. You can see the fighter is just hiding. That's why he stops the fight. With the official decision, once again, here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Bobby Wambacher steps in, waves off the contest officially. Four minutes, 12 seconds, and round number one, the winner by TKO, still undefeated Romero Shona Cotton. The exact time of the finish, 4-12 of round number one. Here's Big John McCarthy.
Romero, you took this fight when your opponent came in weighing over 15 pounds overweight. Why is it that you wanted that fight? Hey, man, it's ridiculous. I spent, a, you know, I spent eight weeks in camp. You know, I did my job. I came in. I hit my weight. You know, I'm a, I'm a professional. That's what you're supposed to do. I expected him to do that. But hey, I'm here to do my job. I'm going to make weight, do my thing every time. Hey, MWH, baby. Free Uncle Chuck. Let's talk about that right hand. You hit him with a straight right hand. That's what set it up, and then you followed up with knees. How do you think your progression as an MMA fighter from a pure wrestler is coming? I mean, you can see it. You know, I went from uh, my first two matches throwing like maybe two punches, three punches, throwing two and three here, but they landed this time, baby. Hey, that's what we're doing. We're going to keep on progressing, keep on evolving. Sounds good, everybody. Your winner, Mr. Romero Cotton. So our next fight is in the welterweight division. Tale of the tape. Brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. You can see through their records, there's a big disparity as far as knowledge and experience. But I'm telling you right now, Corey Davis can handle it. This is going to be a great fight. With the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA, presented by Miller Lite, now features three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the Blue Corner. At six foot, weighing in 170.2 pounds. Undefeated as a professional, he brings three wins, no losses. He fights out of Omaha, Nebraska, presenting Corey Davis. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner. At five foot nine, weighing in 170.4 pounds. His professional record, 12 victories, four defeats. He fights out of Pine Ridge, South Dakota, presenting David Bulldog Michelle. And the referee in charge of the action, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee for this welterweight fight. David Mashad grew up on Pine Ridge Indian Israel, Reservation, at one time the Fight. poorest country in the nation. He was the valedictorian of his class with a 4.0 grade average. Tale of the Tape brought to you by Dave & Buster's. Fight Talk All Night brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. David Mashad in the red gloves, Corey Davis in the blue gloves has not been out of the first round, he is 3-0 and in his professional career. Corey Davis came in and landed two good right hands. That was a mistake as far as trying to take that as a lateral drop, but still comes out on top. Get his head high, both up back to center. I'm telling you right now, Corey Davis, I watched a lot of him. He's very strong, he's very athletic, and he's very tough. David Machado is a guy, he's got a lot of experience. He understands the transitions of the game. He's the guy that's gonna be slicker in this cage, but he's in against a very tough and ornery and pissed off fighter because he thinks he was being disrespected. Everyone, he looked at as everyone thinks he's gonna lose. Corey Davis, seven and zero oh as an amateur. So he has not lost an MMA from 2013 to present day as he tries to take the back of David Mashad. 29 years old, training out of the lab with John Crouch. Saw John Crouch, one of the best guys in this business earlier tonight. Of course, Benson Henderson, Joe Riggs, John Moraga, and the crew training in Glendale, Arizona. He got hurt. This could be it. It is all over. Pine Ridge, South Dakota's Bulldog, David Mashad. Big mistake led to David Bashad landing that punch. That's MMA, it can happen. You make a mistake, your opponent catches it. Good night. Watch as he goes, he tries to come up, get his hooks in, tries to ride, but he slips off. When he gets hit here with that right hand, that hurts him, comes right over. Lands a couple more as he was trying to give referee Jason Herzog the, hey, are you gonna stop this? This guy's hurt. Just keep going until the referee stops you. It was a huge shot. When he lands here, that shot, he never saw it, and those are the ones that hurt you. Again, see those hooks, but he slips off, hits the ground, 
Head comes forward, does not see the punch coming. That's the one that hurts him. Goes and hits him with a couple more right hands. Jason Herzog stops the fight. Corey Davis has still not been out of the first round. <laughs> not that this this one is not the way he wanted to be, but you know, this is what happens sometimes with a young fighter. You're trying to press the action yes. and you make a mistake that your experienced opponent catches and they get the win. Just learn from it. And this kid right here is just beloved here in the state of South Dakota. To make it official, once again, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end officially. One minute, 42 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, David Bulldog Michaud. David Bulldog Mashad with his sixth career, sixth career win by knockout here in Sioux Falls tonight. Congratulations to David Mashad. Jason Jackson and Jordan Larson. Both of these guys are very similar. They're both outstanding fighters. The only advantage you can see is two inches of reach for Jason Jackson. It's a good fight. Michael C. Williams with the official introductions. Tonight from the Sanford Pentagon, we now go to three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the Blue Corner. At six foot one, weighing in 171 pounds, even his professional record seven wins, three losses. He fights out of Miami, Florida, presenting Jason, the ass kicking machine, Jackson. And across the cage, his adversary, out of the red corner, at five foot 11, weighing in 170.2 pounds. As a professional, he brings nine victories, four defeats. He fights out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, introducing Jordan Larson. In charge of the action, your referee, Mike Beltran. Mike Beltran, our referee for this welterweight matchup. Jason Jackson and Jordan Larson. All right, gentlemen, first round. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Head let's go. Here we go. Jason Jackson, part of that Hard Knocks 365 team. His teammate Tyler Ray with an impressive first round victory earlier tonight. Storley Chandler, Rockhold Lawler, Kamaru Usman and company. His teammates, Jordan Larson, <laughs> fighting as part of the Power MMA team. Light heavyweight champion and heavyweight contender. And a member of the Final Four, Ryan Bader, in his corner this evening. Red gloves for Larson, blue gloves for Jackson. Jason Jackson used to be with the Black Zillions. That's where he was known from. And everybody that works out with Jason will tell you what a superb athlete is, how good he is. But he always seems to have some kind of bad thing happen to him in that fight that's going to set him up to be in that promotion that he wants. So we're going to see what he can do tonight in a very tough opponent with Jordan Larson. Both men making their Bellator debut this evening here in Sioux Falls in the Sanford Pentagon. Larson looking for the takedown early. Good takedown defense by Jackson. And that's what I'm talking about, that athleticism. That's what his parent, that's what all of his training partners are going to talk to you about is how athletic Jason Jackson is. He just needs to remain confident. You talk to me about the mental part of his game. That has broken down and hurt him in the past, hasn't it? It has, and it, it's been at times that he's winning the fight, but things don't go the way he wants. So there's a call from the referee or whatever, and he lets it affect him. You've got to just keep marching forward. You keep marching forward, you're going to get your wins. Born in Kingston, Jamaica. Three wins by knockout, two by submission, seven and three record. You put a little pressure on yourself when you give yourself the nickname the ass kicking machine. <laughs> just a little. As he tries to change levels and go to the body. And you put a little pressure on yourself when John McCarthy tells me that Jason Jackson is very similar to Vitor Belfort. <laughs> he's very similar that he's a very fast twitch fiber muscle okay. athlete. He is fast and when he is confident and coming forward and throwing, 
he starts to overwhelm his opponent. When he is getting hit and not sure what to do, he stops that progression. You see what he's doing right now. He is starting to feel good in this fight. He's starting to unload. He's hitting good shots. And as Jordan's trying to get into him, he's having a hard time getting this fight where he wants to be on the ground. Keep an eye on the hands of Jordan Larson. He's been really working on keeping his hands high. He's a patient fighter, but has a tendency to let those hands drop. Jackson with a straight jab there that just missed. You can see Jackson continues to try to set up a right under uppercut. He keeps on bringing that left hand, and then he dips over, and you're gonna see that uppercut coming, and at times, Jordan is ducking his head, and if it lands, it's gonna have a big impact. Nine professional victories for Sioux Falls, South Dakota's Jordan Larson. From here in Sioux Falls, living and training in Chandler, Arizona with Ryan Bader, Aaron Simpson in the crew. And a left hook connects for Jason Jackson. You can see Jason Jackson time, he's throwing a lot of looping punches, but they're still landing on Jordan. And Jordan is not being able to get this fight where he wants it. The speed is starting to cause him problems in the fight. Just took another big right. Oh, no. This could be it. Big shots from Jason Jackson. And it is all over. Jason Jackson with the victory as he finishes Jordan Larson. You look and it's the athleticism. And it's so hard to understand when you're the guy fighting against it. That speed is hard to compensate for. You need to give yourself a little bit more spacing, a little more distance, and when you can't, you get hit. Let's take a look at this shot right here. Right hand straight down the pipe by Jason Jackson. Beautifully done. You can see the effect that it has. It dis just discombobulates Jordan Larson there. That's a heavy attack. You see that he starts covering up, doing nothing to defend in an intelligent fashion. That's why the referee stops it. Look at look at what it does to his body. Yeah. Just everything starts to go in opposite directions. That right hand had a huge effect. It is the entire reason he wasn't able to continue in the fight. Well, so far, so good for members of the Hard Knocks 365 gym. Could that be a good sign for Logan Storley later tonight, live on Paramount Network? We will find out. And our tale of the tape is brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. As Mike would say, virtually identical. That was nine and two, eight and two records. Both are outstanding fighters. This should be a great fight. Yes, those records are virtually <laughs> identical. And you know what? So is the age, but the reach is three inches different. <laughs> Bryce Logan making his way to the cage out of Dolan, South Dakota. And once again, training at Power MMA, training with Ryan Bader, C.B. Dalloway, and the crew impressive record of nine and two. His opponent, Demarcus Jackson, scrap iron, out of the Hard Knocks gym with a record of eight and two. He will turn 28 in five days. Here is Michael C. Williams with the official introductions. Presented by Miller Live and seen live worldwide on the Bellator MMA Global app. Bellator MMA now presents three five minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing out of the blue corner at five foot eight, weighing in 155.6 pounds. His professional record, eight wins, two losses. He fights out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Marquez Jackson. And across the cage, his adversary tonight out of the red corner at five foot eight, weighing in 155.6 pounds. As a professional, he brings nine victories, two defeats. He fights out of Nolan, South Dakota, presenting Here. Bobby Wambacher, our referee for this lightweight fight. So another battle between Hard Knocks and Power. Bryce Logan and Demarcus, Demarcus Jackson. Bryce, are you ready? Let's get after it. Here we go. 
Fight Clock tonight, brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Red gloves for Bryce Logan, blue gloves for Demarcus Scrap Iron Jackson. In watching tape of Demarcus Jackson, I was very impressed with the way he went about systematically breaking his opponents down. He brings a lot of pressure, and Bryce is going to have to deal with that pressure that he brings. Every time that you see DeMarcus come after Bryce, Bryce needs to counter and make him pay for anything that he's bringing in his way. DeMarcus Jackson, good power in his hands. And if he gets in the clinch, loves to throw knees. He just landed a good left to the body and a right hand to the head. That stunned Bryce Logan. Eight and two record, opened his career five and oh. mentioned on the tail of the tape both men with impressive records both men making their Bellator debut here tonight in Sioux Falls and again right there when you see you see Demarcus Jackson coming and landing shots you got to see oh he's hurt oh yes he is he's wobbling Bryce Logan landing the big shot Bryce is being smart right here he's not just coming in and just throwing caution to the wind. He's trying to tactically think about where he wants to go and hit him with another big shot. Looks like Demarcus Jackson is recovered, and now he's the aggressor. Yeah, a little bit too much aggression going in. You see him you know, running into the cage off of that, but he's got himself back, but he was definitely stunned from that shot from Bryce Logan. Figure anybody who spends time with Bader and Dalloway can wrestle a little bit. Yeah, and you can see, look at, you can see Logan's right arm trying to reach down for that left ankle of Demarcus, and he's not going to be able to get it from that with that leg wrap. Six fight win streak for Bryce Logan. As they battle for over under control, and now they break. Just past the midway point of round number one. Yeah, it's a quality round. Another great straight right hand from Jackson. Bryce Logan responded, but then he got hit too. And this is what we expected. Will we have a prelim fight that makes its way into round number two? <laughs> That's my way of like saying shut out <laughs> to see if I can make this fight stop in the next two minutes. Oh my goodness. Well, that's what I'm talking about. You see, Demarcus Jackson overextends and Bryce Logan counters and makes him pay. That's how he's going to win this fight. Duck that shoulder, looking for the body shot. Inside leg kick from Jackson. Kyle Jackson set that up with the low kick. Benson Henderson style. Every time the Dan Jackson, Henderson style. <laughs> Dan Henderson. Every time Jackson steps forward and throws the left hook, it lands. Every time he tries to lean with it, it's missing. You need to move your feet to get yourself close to your opponent so it lands. Again, Demarcus Jackson, Big Johnny, he likes that little low kick, that little tap, and then throws punches. Bryce Logan just did the same thing. Yeah. Nice body kick. And you see the response from Jackson off the body kick. At least he goes after him. Don't let him have the freebie. Go after him with that right hand. Logan seems comfortable switching his stance a little bit. He did so a moment ago to throw that body kick. I think both fighters are showing you, Mike, that they are very well trained. The way that Bryce Logan handled the entire situation when he had hurt Demarcus shows that, you know what, he's a well-trained fighter because a lot of guys would have gone right after him and tried to put him away and would have spent a lot of energy. Bryce was composed, looked at what he had, and decided, you know what, I'm not going to do that at this point. This is two well-trained fighters. Just a little thing right there as we get towards the finish of this round. Bryce Logan saw that he wasn't going to get that takedown, John, but he stayed with the movement 
Stop. and threw a kick at the very end. Exactly. You know, uh, everything that you're seeing, fighting is about being smart. And if a guy's going to attack you, you need to make him pay for it. When we talk about paying for it, that means return something. Don't give him that freebie so he thinks that he can just do this. So he didn't bail on it. He actually did something with it, John. Yep. Watch this right hand. That right hand hits him top of the head. And you think, well, that's not that hard. But watch his legs start to stiffen. And he starts to have problems with his equilibrium. That was a smart move. That right hand hurts him. But I don't think that he was going to be able to put him away in this position. And I thought Bryce Logan did a really good job of composing himself in this situation and not overextending. Here's a good right hand and a right hand return. That's what we're talking about. Don't just let it happen. Watch his feet move forward, extends and touches. Watch the hand come back. That's what you want to see out of your fighter. Getting set for our first round two. Second round. Red gloves for Logan, blue gloves for Jackson. Who do you give round one to? First time I've had a chance to ask you that. And I'll tell you what, overall, Jackson landed the, the more shots and he landed some heavy shots, but Logan hurt him. That's going to be the difference on the scorecard for the judges. All right, 10 9 Bryce Logan on Big John's scorecard. Power MMA's Bryce Logan, Hard Knocks 365. And Marcus Jackson just threw a nice hook. You can see that left hook when he steps in and he's within range. DeMarcus is very accurate with that left hook. DeMarcus is throwing some kicks and, you know, that shows that his game is evolving because, John, you've talked about in the past that DeMarcus Jackson tends to box more than kickboxing. We're seeing him start to utilize his legs a lot more. You're exactly right. When you, when you become more one-dimensional in MMA, you're taking away tools for no reason. Make your opponent have to deal with everything. The more they have to deal with, the harder the fight is for them. And if you utilize your legs, it sets up the hands. It does, and, and your hands set up your kicks. Yep, opens things up. Switch of the stance once again by Bryce Logan, and, and he did it the same way as in the first round. He switches the stance and throws that left body kick. Yeah. Demarcus Jackson is starting to land some heavy shots here. That's a heavy leg kick on that back leg, and that left hook keeps on touching Logan. Logan's going to have to figure out a way to stop that left hook. Bryce Logan is a fighter that likes to move forward. He is, and when you can't do that in the fight, you need to say, I've got to laterally move. Don't move backwards. Move laterally like he's trying to do right there. There are very few fighters who can do the Chuck Liddell backpedal and knock people out. Yeah, that's not the norm for you to set your feet and have power. But some guys just have this God-given ability. Chuck is one of those guys. Nice leg kick. Followed up by the inside leg kick from Bryce Logan. Midway point of this fight. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. I am so impressed with both fighters. I like the fact, you know, Logan tried to take this fight into a different realm and take him to the ground. And he, at this point, has decided, you know what? I don't have the, the ability or the strength or the speed to get into this guy, so I'm going to have to stand up with him. But at least with his stand-up, he's doing smart attacks. He's countering. He's doing the things that we want to see out of our fighters. Big John, this is a fight worthy of 9-2 and two against 8-2. and two. It is, and this is one of those ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm the horrible person. Used to be the referee. I, I hate to see anyone lose these when both guys are fighting so well. Yes. Bryce Logan, he, he, he's going back and forth on that orthodox and that southpaw stance. It doesn't seem to be giving Jackson a whole lot of problems, but it does seem to slow down Jackson. And again, the body kick when he goes southpaw. I would like to see Bryce Logan go to the southpaw stance and do something different. 
because Demarcus Jackson three times has seen him throw the body kick from that stance. Well, you can see that Bryce Logan wants to stand in an orthodox because his power hand is his right hand. And so he keeps on trying to switch back to that orthodox so he can throw that right hand with power instead of having it out front. But if it's out front, start utilizing, start popping that thing in your opponent's face and making him have to deal with it. The first two times Bryce Logan utilized that move and threw the body kick, it landed big time. That last one, Logan, was blocked by Jackson's elbow. Now that still hurts, don't get me wrong. Yeah, but it's a block. Yes. But if Logan can show that and get Jackson to bite, you never know. There's a nice little left hand that Logan landed. But you know, when your foot hits that elbow, that does not feel real good. You can break your foot pretty easily on that. Very easy. 15 Big. seconds left in the round. Good jab. Big attempt by Bryce Logan there. He's he's been coming up. He's got uh, a nice shot. Quick up the <laughs> It's a good battle. It is. These guys are banging. A lot of back and forth in that five minutes, Big John. There was a lot of back and forth action, but if you're going to take a look at who landed the biggest shots, nice leg kick. He landed big left hooks. Good job of setting up the kick with the hands. You see the hands come over, the hands come up to defend, comes with the low kick. Here's a good outside kick by Bryce Logan. And inside right off of it. All of these shots are big shots. Uppercut, it's kind of an extended uppercut that we utilize sometimes. You kind of hold it off and shoot it out. That was a very good, oh, tough on, round, on, but I think we have an even fight going into the third round. Marcus, you ready? Bryce, you ready? Let's get up. Five minutes remain. Logan in the red, Jackson in the blue. 1-1 one, one on Big John's scorecard. Power MMA against Hard Knocks, 365. You can see as they came out, Marcus Jackson came out, established himself as the guy that's bringing it forward. Landed a couple of good shots. Bryce Logan needs to get this back, get some of that lateral movement, get him having to stop that progression of offensive attacks. Logan out of Dolan, South Dakota. Logan's trying to counter, but he's missing because Jackson at this point is seeing those counters and giving just that little bit of movement, that two inch bit backward head movement is making that punch miss now. Six fight win streak on the line for Bryce Logan. Jackson has won three of his last four fights. Five days shy of 28 years old. Logan, 28 years old. This fight has been contested entirely on the feet. And there's been about one or two clinches. That's about it. And you can look and say, well, why has it been contested on the feet? It's because that's where DeMarcus Johnson, Jackson has wanted it to be. He's the one that's decided this is gonna be a stand-up fight. Both guys throwing short check hooks inside as they both came together. You saw Logan try to load up and land a big hook, a little bit off mark. Under three minutes on the clock. Bryce Logan's camp telling him, you gotta move forward, you gotta move forward. And the reason they want him to move forward is DeMarcus Jackson does not become as offensive when he's moving backwards. There we go, their takedown. Yeah, first time. And again, Jackson's the guy that's deciding where this fight is gonna be fought. And DeMarcus Jackson has some decent wrestling skills. Close guard for a moment. Jackson looking to advance. 
You see Logan's trying to use a knee shield to keep those hips back away from him. He needs to push on to Marcus Jackson's head, to start putting his head out to the side. Now he's decided he's just gonna settle for full guard. In a fight this close, a takedown and some ground control this late could win to Marcus Jackson this fight. Yeah, that's a bad position he just moved himself into. That was a mistake by Bryce Logan in trying to get himself to the fence. Now he's in a bad position with Jackson on his back. Jackson with one hook in. Jackson has one hook in, but you can see that his right hand is actually controlling the right hand of Bryce Logan inside. You can see that right there. And all he's doing is continuing with the pressure while his hand, his other left arm is around the neck. That's just pressure. He's not trying to choke him out, but he's trying to make things difficult for him so he can extend it. Can he finish it with just over a minute remaining? Right, well, right there, he needs to, that's in a, in a fight you tell a fighter. When you know your position is getting bad, don't try to hold on to it, switch it. And a nice job by Bryce Logan. Well, this is the position that Bryce Logan has wanted him. You can see he's got an arm lace on the far side. He's got his right arm trapped. Now Logan working with 35 seconds on the clock. Working, but not scoring. He's got to do something to score here. There you go. The South Dakota crowd cheering on Dolan's Bryce Logan. He still had that arm lace, just let go of it right now, but he needs to start to posture so he can bring some damage down on top of Jackson. Don't hold, go after him. Throws the elbow. Logan's gonna finish this fight in top position. Gonna make it very tough on the judges. They go the distance. Michael C. Williams has the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone three, four rounds of action, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Sean Romo, scores the fight 29-28, seeing it for Logan. Your second judge, Michael Bell, scores the fight 29-28, to seeing the fight for Jackson. Your third and final judge at cage side, Nick Johnson, scores the fight 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Demarcus Jackson. Jackson with the victory in his Bellator debut. Congratulations to Scrap Iron and what was a very good fight against Bryce Logan. Tale of the tape for our final preliminary matchup brought to you by Dave & Buster's. The only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. Two unbeaten set to battle. Exactly that, 6-0 and 3-0, and which means someone's always gotta, gotta go. go. Michael C. Williams with the official introduction. Bellator MMA, presented by Miller Lite now, features lightweights inside the cage set for three five-minute rounds. We'll introduce first the blue corner at 5'9", weighing in 155.4 pounds. His professional record undefeated at 3-0. He fights out of Bellevue, Nebraska, presenting Troy Maraki. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner. At 5 foot 11, weighing in 155.8 pounds as a professional. He too stands undefeated, bringing six wins without a defeat. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Caracas, Venezuela, presenting Omar Morales. In charge of the action, your referee, Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog will be our referee for our final preliminary matchup. And they have been some good ones. A bunch of first round knockouts, a split decision, and here we go. Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories.
Red gloves for the native of Venezuela, Omar Morales. Blue gloves for Troy Nowrocki. Fighting out of Bellevue, Nebraska. I can tell you that the guys at Hard Knocks are very impressed with Omar. They believe that he is explosive and that he is someone to reckon with in the future in the lightweight division. Three and zero for Troy Naraki, and Morales is six and zero. Six years the elder of his opponent. Good shot early. And the oh, is there. there. This could be it. It is all over. Just like that. Omar Morales. That's what we're talking about as far as explosive. Some guys have the ability to create a power and explosion that you just cannot withstand. And then once you're hurt, they finish you. Watch this, now Rocky comes, that knee comes up. It's more of a, meaning for more of a kick, but the knee is what lands and that's what hurts him. Watch how fast this actually happens, boom. That big shot right there hurts Naraki, and he's tough, but that right hand finishes him. Puts him on the canvas. You cannot blame Jason Herzog for stopping that fight. The fighter cannot protect himself. That is the end of the fight. First career win by knockout for 7-0, Omar Morales. And it comes very quickly here in round number one. Once again, we send it to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. 58 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, Omar Morala. Not a bad way to debut as a Bellator fighter. 58 seconds is all it took for Omar Morales to finish his opponent. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner, Omar Morales. Omar, that was an explosive semi-knee, semi-kick situation, but you ended it with the right hand. What were you trying to hit him with in that first exchange? I want to say, I want to say some things. Bellator, I'm ready for more. Call me, I'm ready for next fight. Thank you. When you, when you hit him with that shot with that knee and then hit him with the right hand, did you know that that fight was over at that point? Yeah. I go in for him. I'm big shot. I'm win. Thank you. Well, I want to tell you that was an impressive debut for you. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Omar Morales. Tywin Claxton, 2-0. Chris Lencioni, 4-1. The age is virtually identical with the official introductions here is michael c williams ladies and gentlemen good evening and welcome tonight live on paramount network miller light presents bellator mma from sioux falls south dakota the action begins now with featherweight set for three five minute rounds brought to you by boost mobile boost makes it easy to switch switching makes it easy to save and by Stanford Pentagon, where legends come to play. And now, introducing first the blue corner. At 5'10", weighing in 148.4 pounds, his professional record, four wins, one loss, fighting out of Camby, Oregon, presenting Chris Sunshine Lancioni. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot eight, weighing in 145.8 pounds as a professional. Early on, he's undefeated. Two victories, no defeats. He fights out of Cleveland, Ohio. Introducing Taiwan Air Claxton. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Mike Beltran. Mike Beltron, our referee, and yesterday at the official weigh-ins, things got a little heated. They, they were heated, and they were heated for a couple of reasons. Taiwan Claxton thinks that 
Chris Lencioni has been saying a lot of smack about him and then didn't make weight. That didn't make Taiwan right, very happy. First yes, throw. indeed. Chris Let Lencioni, 148.4. The fight goes anyway. Here we go. Fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Claxton the southpaw in the red gloves. Lencioni in the blue gloves. Although the nickname has changed to air, Claxton is still very speedy. He is speedy, he's very fast, and he is a very good wrestler. His wrestling came out, and you know, he was, th for three years, he was with Ohio University under the Bobcats with Joel Greenlee, who's a great coach going in about his 20th year there, has one unbelievable program. Spinning back fist, Claxton with a quick takedown. Avoided the spinning back fist, ducked under, and now goes to his wrestling and ground and pound. Looking to improve his position on Lencioni. This is where Taiwan Tyson needs to be careful. He is the better wrestler if you're going to go off of pure wrestling ability. But Chris Lencioni is very dangerous off of his back. He does a lot of good sweeps, and he's got a lot of good submission attacks. For this camp, Taiwan Claxton left the strong style gym led, of course, by Stevie Miocic, and basically trained on his own, but trained with different wrestlers and boxers, no, no, no. and did spend some time, John, in Athens, Ohio, at no, Ohio no. University, with Joel Greenlee and his old Bobcat teammates and some of the young Bobcats, of course, now. Yeah, he's been talking about he is traveling, going to all kinds of different locations and gyms to get training with a lot of different looks, so he feels it that he feels that that's going to make him the complete fighter trying to get out of trouble oh nice left hand nice left hand against chris lencioni you gotta you gotta consider when you've got a wrestler of the style and ability of taiwan class and he's getting up off the ground that's telling you i don't like what i'm feeling here i don't like what's going on and he's resetting but he's got to look that's his strong suit, so you need to figure out a way to slow down what Lencioni does on the ground. Getting things started at 145. That's where our main event will take place here, live on Paramount Network. You know, getting some tweets already from the fans. Love the look of this Bellator card tonight. So do we. Mike Goldberg, Big John McCarthy, Jen Brown, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Sanford, Pentagon. Red gloves for... Taiwan Claxton, blue gloves for Chris Lencioni, who said, my family aren't very good people. Basically, his stepfather's name was Williams, and so he took the name that his grandfather brought over from Italy. Said, my grandfather stormed the beaches of Normandy. The guy was the ultimate man. The name was fading away, and now it is officially Chris Lencioni. Well, you need to be proud of who you are and what you represent. And that's what you know, Chris was saying is I didn't like carrying that name. It wasn't who I am, and I don't want to represent that name. I want to represent what is my family's name, and that's what he's doing. Owns his own gym, Sunshine Athletics. Also spends a lot of time with JLP Sun. And you're seeing a little bit of a shift in the fight here. You're seeing that Lencioni is actually starting to take over, and he's coming forward. Taiwan Claxton off of getting up off of the ground and saying, I don't want to be here. He's actually given Chris some incentive and making Chris feel pretty good about how he's doing in this fight. Chris is throwing a lot. Some are just, just to feel things out, but he's throwing a lot of spinning back fists. He is throwing a lot of spinning back fists, and he's throwing a lot of leg kicks without setting them up. He needs to settle himself down and think about covering those leg kicks so they'll be more effective. In his last fight against Daniel Carey, he was throwing a lot of open right leg kicks or open high kicks with his right leg with nothing to go with it. That's not smart fighting. That was his first career loss. He said there was a lot of negativity and distractions going into that fight. Lencioni said, I'm a thinker. I'm an entertainment capitalist. I'm thinking all the time inside the cage. He said of Claxon, like, He's a wild wannabe guy with weak character who called me out after a loss. So, thus the bad blood that has gone on for the last few weeks. You well, can tell off of that attack. He takes Lencioni down, 
Lance Yoni doesn't go to close guard, has open guard, starts shifting his hips back and forth, and Claxton starts to have problems with that movement, doesn't like it, and gets up out of there. Final seconds of round one. Stop. Round number two underway. Thank you, Jen Brown. Red gloves for Taiwan Claxton. Blue gloves for Chris Lencioni. Claxton with a bit of a slip could have cost him. That was, but it was a very nice punch that he landed before it. Had a slip, ends up underneath, but you see the ability of his wrestling to come out on top. This is what I like. You see what he's doing right now with his feet right here, Mike. Putting the foot on the hip, opening the guard. Now he went to close, but he's been switching his hips back and forth, creating an angle problem for Taiwan Claxton that he right now is showing he does not know how to deal with. Watch those fingers. Lencioni began training in Taekwondo at age six. He's a black belt in Taekwondo. At age 13, that school shut down. At age 14, he began wrestling. He said he got his butt kicked by every wrestler in the Central Valley of California. Watch out for the up kick. See him right there. Good heavy hips coming forward by Taiwan Claxton. That's what he needs to do. Posture up, keep your hips heavy, and forcing down onto Chris Lencioni. That's going to keep you in position. It's going to allow you to That's land shots. Kick. Round one, who was the better fighter? Round one definitely goes to Taiwan Claxton. You saw a lot of things that Chris is trying, but he's not being successful. He's doing a lot of spinning attacks and things that he needs to set those things up. Claxton began wrestling in eighth grade. In sixth grade, he was cut from the basketball team. In eighth grade, when he showed up at tryouts, they immediately asked him to be the manager. <laughs> I that, think, that's never a good thing. I think they missed out on an athlete. Yes, they did. But he turned out to be a pretty good wrestler, and he's a pretty good fighter. See, right here, this position, that leg over, trapping Lenciano's leg down, that's a smart move. If you get this to half guard, you're going to take away a ton of submission ability from Chris Lencioni. That's what Taiwan Claxton needs to do. Now start to utilize that position and bring shots down. Wrestlers love the turf. It is yeah, because it's the closest thing to wrestling that they have in MMA. That leg turk in wrestling keeps you in position. Well, it can also keep you in position when you're in an MMA fight. Now he's to mount. Yep, this is bad for Chris Lencioni. Right at the midway point of this three-round fight. And a typical wrestler right away started to grape find the legs, which, hey, it's hard on the diaphragm, but right now he needs to let Lencioni roll underneath him. Good job of controlling the position, but he let his hooks go. Had one in for just a moment, John. Now he's trying to stack up and throw down some punches. And you look at the overall movement. Good job by Chris Lencioni yes. to get himself back into having Claxton in his guard. His legs are open. He's trying to do things right here. That's the worst thing he can do. Body triangling him, keeping him right on top of him. Chris Lencioni said, my experience is very different than his competing on the West Coast and in the Pacific Northwest. Thought that would make a difference. Body shots from Claxton. Lencioni covering up. 90 seconds on the clock here in round number two. Hey fans, find new official Bellator MMA gear, Kimbo Slice bobbleheads, and much more at bellatorshop.com. Taiwan Claxton needs to figure out how to keep his head up high over Chris Lencioni. That's going to give him a position where he can posture and bring down short, heavy shots, heavy hands, heavy elbows. In his win back in February against Jose Perez, he finished it in round number two with some ground and pound, but he said he could have applied some more pressure early, mixed up his takedowns and his punches very well. And now it appears like he's trying to push a better pace than he did in that fight. He learned from that fight. I think he is trying to push a pace, but what I'm seeing is I think Chris Lencioni is starting to get a little tired. Yes. That's why he's putting himself with that, you know, figure four of the body. It's going to keep Claxton where he's at. That's not something that he should be doing. He should be trying to move him, either reverse him or get up out of the position. 
Good hammer fist by Claxton. Trying to break down his opponent here in the final seconds of round number two. A big round for Cleveland, Ohio's Air Claxton. Prince Lencioni said, you know you're two rounds down, strike him, strike him, hit him and move, right, hit him and move, you know he's going to try to fight. take you down. You ready to fight, hit him, let's go. Five minutes remain. Red gloves for Claxton, blue gloves for Lencioni. Big second round for Taiwan Claxton. It's so okay, easy to sit there and, and, and I love the fact that Messioni's corner is telling, hey man, you're two rounds down, because he is, there's no doubt about it. But to say I'm gonna stand up and box this guy, a guy that's faster than me, that has faster feet than me, that's not gonna be an easy thing for Chris to do. He's gonna have to open up and take risks, which is gonna put him in a, in a place where he can be hurt. But is there anything different that he can do the way that this fight is going so far, though, Big John? Well, in my opinion, he creates problems for Claxton off of his back. Now, I don't, I, most of us are never going to want to have our fighter on his back and say that's where we're going to win. But you can see that he has the ability to create problems for Claxton off his back. But go for that submission. Go for the full thing. Don't just turn your hips and then let him get up out of there. Go after him. Now he's in a position where he's a little bit sweatier, a little bit slipperier. He's, it's all harder, but he's not the guy that is the fastest guy in the stand-up here, and that's where he's going to have problems. He needs to do things that are going to open things up for Claxton to be successful in hurting Claxton. Okay, there's the takedown. But would you go as far as having him pull guard? I don't, I would never have it pulled. Okay. Uh, that, I, was no. just, I was just checking. He, I was just checking. He, he did that in his last fight about three times, and I looked and said, why are you doing okay, that? I was just checking. There, there's ways of going after your opponent. Right now, Claxton's in a very good job, and Chris needs to get right. himself at least back to, you know, a half guard position and then full guard if he can attain it. But once you do, don't close your legs and right. start to set up a submission. Just go for it. If it doesn't work, oh well. Because now there's, you either finish him or you lose the fight. Exactly. You're down, you're down on the scorecards. There's no doubt about that. And putting him back in full guard is great. Now start to move and go. But set up a little wrist control. Start to bring the legs up high. Start to control his posture. Start to bring that triangle up. You've got to start trying things. You can't wait. Claxton is well aware of all of those things. See, and this way he could have rolled into a leg lock, but he didn't take the leg with him. And again, going back to this body triangle, this right now is doing nothing. There's, there's no submission attempt off of that. You've got to open it up to get a submission, so why are you going to it? So actually controlling the posture at this time with the scorecard as it is, is not the greatest thing. No, because controlling his posture is going to keep you from being hit, which is important, but you're definitely not going to be winning the round and you're not going to win the fight since you already know that you're down. Under two minutes in our first of four matchups here live on Paramount Network. Claxton looking to move to 3-0 and and in gotta, his Bellator career. you got to like the fact that what you're seeing from Claxton is he is starting to progress in the fight. He's trying to gain posture so he can gain power so he can finish his opponent. That fine knee. See right here, Lesione should be bringing that leg down inside, entwining the leg, trying to put Claxton in a position where there is some type of submission attempt. That flying knee in his Bellator debut is up to almost one million views on YouTube. It was sensational. It was impressive. He covered a lot of distance. That was a fun night on the campus of Penn State University. Under a minute. And it's been all Air Claxton. And if you're Chris Lesioni right here, 
try to utilize the fence. Put your feet on the fence. You can't grab it with your toes, but you can put your feet there. And you can walk as much as you want trying to change that position, and it can possibly bring Claxton over where you're on top of him. Not a lot of damage going on, but definitely just systematically bringing some volume down on Lencioni that he can't stop and winning the round again. Looking to finish with a flurry. Dominant performance by Cleveland, Ohio's Taiwan Claxton. What? 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 And the feud and bad blood continues. Take a look at some of this action right here. Lencioni's trying to trap the leg, but Claxton utilizes it as an inside trip to bring him down. This was a point where Lencioni got in a good position. Claxton changes it again with his superior wrestling. You can see Lencioni bringing the leg up. That's good. He gets full mount, opens up on him. Lencioni is smart enough to be able to move it back into a half guard from that position, but everything went Taiwan Claxton's way. Lencioni was always a step behind in this and off of the ground when he wasn't going for the submission attempts. He was just accepting damage. The OU Bobcat, very dominant, all air Claxton. Our official decision is coming up next. To make it official, here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance inside the Bellator cage, we'll go to your three judges. Nick Johnson, Melanie Wickers, Sal D'Amato, all three scored exactly the same, 30 to 27. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Taiwan and Braxton. 3-0 inside the Bellator cage, and Taiwan Claxton is with Big John McCarthy. Taiwan, congratulations on a dominant victory over a very tough opponent. How are you in dealing with him off of his back? Um, I've got, I got a, a great BJJ coach, Shannon White, and I have one of the best purple belts to train with who should be a black belt, Josh Roller. And, you know, we watch his fights, and I plan for him to try to go inverted on me. I know he likes that uh, series where he tries to sweep you, then go for a triangle. Uh, or armbar, then go for a triangle. So I was very well prepared for this fight. Uh, my ground coach, Neil Melanson, great with pressure. You know, I'm a, I'm a top level wrestler, and if a guy thinks that he's gonna lay on his back and I'm not gonna make him pay, he's sadly mistaken. Well, you had, a, you had some words with Chris at the weigh-in, and then you had words with him afterwards. Are you heated about what occurred with him not making weight? Absolutely, you know, the guy calls me out, you know, after he calls me out, he comes in, he doesn't make weight. And to throw this out here, guys, he asked for a catch weight 30 minutes before weigh-ins even started, which means he had two and a half hours to make weight. We're professional fighters, we're grown men. You sign a contract and you say that you're gonna make a weight, you come in here and you make the weight. You know, it's just how I was raised, you know. My old man sitting over there, if I, if, if I say I'm gonna do something, I do it. And, uh, you know, I, that, that, that just got under my skin a little bit. And then uh, at the weigh-ins, uh, he, he started talking trash. Like, how you gonna talk trash and you don't make weight? You already lost mentally. So I was ready to come in here and destroy this guy, man. Well, I'm sure that your dad, everybody at Ohio U, and everybody that knows you is proud of that victory. Everybody, your winner, Taiwan Claxton. And hey, real quick, huge shout out to my striking coach, Steve. This is Steve Tracy the Razor, he's my striking coach. And guys, I did this whole, this whole camp out of my garage. And this man stood by my side. And as you can tell, I came out here and I was prepared. This is my striking coach and we're gonna go all the way to the top. This is Steve, guys. Congratulations. Steve Tracy, his very first striking coach. Taiwan Claxton, three and oh, inside the Bellator cage. Congratulations to Air Claxton.
Our tale of the tape is brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. Look at those records, 7-0 for Gallagher, 10-1 for Ricky Bandeos. Both of these guys are outstanding young fighters. Van Dejas has a four-inch reach advantage. Here is Michael C. Williams. Presented by Miller Lite, Bellator MMA Live on Paramount Network continues now in the bantamweight division set for three five-minute rounds. It's brought to you by the Sanford Pentagon, where legends come to play. And now, first introducing the blue corner. At 5'10", weighing in 135.4 pounds, his professional record, 10 wins, only one defeat. He fights out of Brick, New Jersey, presenting Ricky Bandeja. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at 5'9", weighing in 135.4 pounds, making his debut at bantamweight. He enters as an undefeated professional, seven victories, no defeats. Hailing from Strupon, introducing Ireland's own James, the Strupon in charge of the action, Bobby Wambacher. Bobby Wambacher, our referee for the bantamweight debut of James Gallagher. Stay back. Rick, are you ready? Gallagher, Stan Dejas, here we go! Fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Kicks early from Gallagher in the red gloves. Van Dejas in the blue gloves. You can see that Van Dejas says he respects that ground game by James Gallagher. Gallagher came across that cage with no respect for what Ricky is there for. He needs to give him something to think about. Gallagher showed a flying knee through some hands. Big John, we talked during our prelim show about the fact that you see all these submissions from James Gallagher and people tend to sleep on his striking skills. That would be a huge mistake. It is because when he is composed, he understands that distance and the timing that is needed to cover that distance. He does it very well. He is a fast athlete, but he does leave openings to be countered and to be hit. And you've got to take advantage of those moments. Said he has matured a ton during his time away from the cage. 419 days since he last fought. They clinch. 10 and 1 record, five fight win streak coming into his Bellator debut. Our good friend Ariel Helwani. It's been 14 months since we have seen Gallagher. Looking forward to this. Congratulations to Ariel Helwani on all the Great success recently. One of the best in the business. Very nice left right that Ricky Bendejas just landed. That's what he needs to do. He needs to give James Gallagher something to think about and to slow down him wanting to come in and attack. You know, we were talking about and talk to AJ McKee a moment ago. You talk about the, the young guns and the young superstars in our sport, Gallagher. 28 days younger than Aaron Pico. Van Dejas trying to put Gallagher to a test here tonight, Big John. And so far, so good. An outstanding recovery. Great job at getting back to his feet off of a very good takedown by James Gallagher. Gallagher made his professional debut at 18 years, 11 months, 23 days old. Oh, big shot! That hurt Gallagher. That right hand hurt him bad. He is still hurt. Mike just took another right hand. He's Big in shot. Trouble. He's in trouble. Gallagher's rocked. Van Dejas looking for the finish. And it's all over. Ricky Van Dejas knocks out James Gallagher. Wow.
That right hand, you see it land, and it lands solid. Now, he's not that hurt as far as his brain's still there. You see his hands going back to get catch him on his fall, but he is still hurt. He gets caught right in the face with that beautiful left kick high, and Ricky Bandejas comes in and puts a whooping on James Gallagher once he hits the ground. These are heavy shots he's landing. Big shots, he goes out, referee stops the contest. That is a beautiful knockout victory for Ricky Bandejas. That is why they fight. Ricky Bandejas, we make it official. Coming up next. Right hand, sidekick, first professional loss, but a great show of sportsmanship by young James Gallagher. Congratulations to Ricky Bandejas. Victorious in his Bellator debut. He now has won six straight fights to make it official. Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 49 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, Ricky Bandeja. I am here with your winner, Ricky Bandeas. Ricky, that was an impressive knockout of a very young and brash James Gallagher, but he is a good fighter, and you just showed everyone, so are you. Absolutely. First off, I want to say hi to my girls. I'm coming home. And second off, he's tough, you know. At first, he gets you with the talking, but, you know, you've got to block that out and get the finish. Did he get into your head at all with all the brashness, all the talk, and make you want to overextend a little bit in trying to hurt him in the beginning of that fight? Uh, not until he came in the ring. Then he started, you know, really getting in my head. But, you know, we practiced time and time again at the gym. We got the best coaches and uh, stayed calm. Got the job done. How much is working out with someone like Nick Catone, Frankie Edgar, Marlon Marais, all of those guys, how much is that doing to not only give you confidence, but to build you to the next level? Uh, it helps a lot. You know, they're the best in the world at their weights, at what they do. You know, you follow in their footsteps, you'll get there too. Well, I just want to say welcome to Bellator, Ricky Bandejas. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Ricky Bandejas. Our tale of the tape is brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. You can look at the reach, 71 to 76. A.J. Matthews has to utilize that length and keep Logan Storley at distance. With the official introductions, once again, here is Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA, presented by Miller Live, now features tonight's co-main event, three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Brought to you tonight by Sanford Pentagon, where legends come to play. And now, live on Paramount Network, we introduce the Blue Corner. At six foot, weighing in 169 pounds, even as a professional. He brings nine wins, seven defeats originally. Hailing from Rapid City, South Dakota, he fights out of Samar, Philippines, presenting the mercenary, AJ Matthew. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner. At five foot nine, weighing in 170.2 pounds as a professional. He's undefeated, eight victories, no defeats. Hailing from Webster, South Dakota, introducing Logan In charge of the action, your referee, Jason Herzog. Okay, fighters gone over the rules in the back. There were no final questions from you, Blue. There were no final questions from you, Red. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Come on, read a fight. Jason Herzog, our referee. Logan Storley. A.J. Matthews. Fight schedule for three five-minute rounds. First round, buddy, are you ready? Buddy, are you ready? Fight! Here we go! Tonight's fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. 
Logan Storley in the red gloves. AJ Matthews in the blue gloves. AJ told us he is very comfortable fighting at 170 pounds. He is. He's always been a very small middleweight, so this is an easy weight for him, and he feels that this is the weight class that he's going to be staying in from now on. That is the All-American wrestling of Logan Storley. Look at that. That shift, that change of position, change of level was just outstanding. Storley with some knees. George St. Pierre style. And he's taking his time. He's not overextending. He's not working hard from the position he's in. He's making AJ have to carry his weight and be the one that's having to work hard. Started wrestling at age five. Logan Storley, the 10th four-time All-American in Minnesota Golden Gophers history. See, if you look at all those little knees, it looks like, oh, he's just, you know, kneeing him in the thigh. But all those knees will add up in making A.J. Matthews slower. If he gets away from Logan Storley, he won't have the same movement. And trust me when I tell you, he's hitting the exact same spot every single time. And it hurts. here tonight inside the Sanford Pentagon. See him grab that ankle and bring A.J. Matthews down to the mat. That's what an All-American wrestler has on his side. The ability to change the position of the fight at any moment. Eight fights, six finishes by knockout. Half guard, or if you're a wrestler, the turf. And this is the worst position that A.J. could be in because he cannot separate that position by pushing on Logan's head here. He's got nowhere to go. The fence is going to hold him in that position, and Logan's going to be able to open up on him with shots. AJ has got to start to move, get his hand to the ground, start to get himself up. He's in big trouble. Yep. This could be it. He's, he's, trying he's, shots. he's trying, though. He's moving. He's trying. Logan Storley. You see how he's trying to get his leg back in, get inside. That's why Jason is letting this fight go. Logan Storley is putting the storm right on A.J. Matthews right now. I like what you did there. I caught that. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying. Yeah, what Logan needs to do is instead of tapping, start bringing power. You bring power, you're going to make the referee stop that fight. A.J. covering up, looking to stand up. Logan Storley's really looking for the finish here. He's putting a lot of energy out, but what he's hitting him with is not that damaging. It's, it's volume, and I'm not saying it doesn't hurt, but that's what hurts. Yes. Go back to the elbow. If he goes back to the elbow, he's going to cause damage. That's what will get his finish. Ninety seconds still remains here in round number one. Good swing of the hips. That was a really nice job by Logan Storley to land that shot that was all about position and opening and then closing it off. Side control. Yep. Right now you're going to see, I, I believe Logan likes to get to mount, especially when he's against the fence. I do not know what he saw. Jason is stopping this fight. It was a timeout. Now somehow I think he thinks that there was a knee, possibly a knee to the head of A.J. Matthews. I think that's what it was, John. Let's look at it. I'm sorry. Over here, please. Over here. Yeah, Logan is trying to hit the, the shoulder, but that knee does touch the head. And this right here, what Jason's going to do is he's going to give time to A.J. Matthews. This time will allow A.J. to actually recover, not from that knee, because that knee didn't really hurt him. It's all of the legal the shots that were applied right? and he got he hit with that he now has the opportunity. Ready? He can get himself you back in the fight needs. and get recovered from all those legal blows. Take your time, stay in the game. What's up? Logan had that position, John, and he wasn't looking to knee A.J. Matthews in the head, maybe the shoulder. The reality of it is, if he uses the other knee, 
which is generally the technique, he knees him right in the midsection, which is what we generally see. That is what we generally see. But you know, Logan did not try to hit Correct. him with an illegal it's, knee. It's instinct. He is trying to hit him to the shoulder. What you're seeing here is, that, and the real question is, I'm telling you, AJ took some big shots legally. That's what hurt him. The shot here, you see the little knee, that little knee inside, that's legal, gets to the body. It's when he brings that left leg inside here, it doesn't hit the shoulder, it it's hits right the head. head. Hits the head and neck area. That is illegal, you cannot knee the head of a grounded fighter. So what's the process that is going on right now? So what you have is Jason Herzog has stopped the fight. There is a five minute timeout. He has brought in the ringside position to look at AJ Matthews. It is going to be dependent upon the, the ringside position if he's going to allow AJ Matthews to continue in this fight. I'm telling you, AJ is clear and should be allowed to continue in this fight. It, a lot of it depends on what he is saying to the ringside position because many times a fighter will come in he will be overwhelmed by another fighter and go, I don't think I can win this fight, and will actually try to get himself out of the fight by saying, I'm dizzy. That is when the ringside position will then say, ah, I'm gonna stop the fight. But you see what A.J. Matthews is as a fighter. He is saying, oh, no, no. Yeah, you got me, but I'm gonna try to get mine. That's what I love about that guy. Add to that the 100 people from Rapid City and around the state here tonight. And the battle continues. And like I said, he got to recover from all of those shots and he gets to get back to his feet, which is where he wants to be. So he gained a lot, even though Jason Herzog didn't take a point, he did penalize Logan Storley. So, and that's what I was just gonna say as we go to referee Big John McCarthy. Man, just nice job. Nice, beautiful job by Logan Storley. Now he's oh, gonna trip him out. Can he get a submission finish here? Oh, he needs to be careful about not letting that position change. Right now, he's not applying that much pressure. Exactly what I'm saying. He knew that he didn't have that, so let me get good position and go back to trying to beat AJ down. AJ Matthews still trying, even with that, you know, pause in the action, if you will, trying to survive the first five minutes of this fight. And that's part of what you've got to do against a guy that wrestles the way that Logan Storley does. And he does. Round one went about as well as it could, minus the stoppage because of the illegal need for Logan Storley. Uh, you couldn't get much better. That is a 10-8 round for Logan Storley. And again, a good point is that a point was not deducted from Logan Storley because it was an unintentional strike to the head. And obviously, AJ coming out looking to utilize his striking and right back down on his back he goes. There's the knees yeah. to the midsection. And you see he keeps on using the same leg. <laughs> yep. He's learned from that. And look at that's what happens. You're not trying to foul your opponent, no question. You're trying to damage your opponent. You're trying to come up with ways and then one goes sliding past that shoulder that you're trying, if you're thinking about me, and it hits him to the head. It's these positions right here. You see he's setting up an arm triangle on him right now. These are the positions that Logan Storley needs to now finish. Get your finish off of it. He's got to come up on that other side, but he's got his head in place. That's why A.J. Matthews got his arm underneath. Eight and oh, six wins by knockout, two by decision. None by submission yet for Storm, Logan Storley. Round two of our co-main event. It's so hard to describe to people that have never grappled with someone that has the grappling pedigree of a Logan Storley, how much pressure they can create with the ground and their body against you. They, they feel like they're 500 pounds. It feels like you can hardly move. And right now, he's still going after. He's trying to set up submissions, which I like to see from Logan Storley. That training that he's been doing is starting to have an effect on his performance. And that training has now been adding a strength and conditioning element. His coach, Mike Barwis, who was at West Virginia, Michigan, with the New York Mets, working with his nutrition, his flexibility, three times a week, his conditioning. Logan told us it's made a big difference on his cardio, 
he feels like he will finish Matthews on the ground, but he, he really talked extensively to us earlier in the week, John, about adding strength and conditioning to his regiment in South Florida. Well, that's strength and conditioning. That's the gas in the gas tank. And if you have a full tank of gas and you have the ability to control the fight, you're the one controlling the pace. You don't get tired. I mean, and he is keeping a high pace going right now, midway point of this fight. He is step, stepping over, trying to get to him out, but just realizing it's not there. Here he starts opening up. Wrestling still the best base discipline for MMA. It's a good point. Well, yeah, a lot of guys who've sat next to me who would agree with that. <laughs> you know what? There, you need everything. Obviously, wrestling is something you need in MMA. Submission game through jujitsu or catch wrestling is something you need. Striking is something you need. You cannot be someone that has a hole in your game and survive in MMA today. But if you had to pick one and put it first, what would you pick? Well, the one thing I'll give wrestling is it teaches someone how to put up with difficult and uncomfortable situations. It is a grind, and if you can get through the grind of wrestling, you're a tough person. Embrace the grind, dictate where the fight takes place, looking for the mount. Yeah, and it, once again, a barrage, a ground and pound by Storley. you got to be very impressed with what Logan Storley is bringing to this fight. He has been putting a whipper on A.J. Matthews, and he is not stopping. These are big shots. They are big elbow right there, Mike. You know that elbow coming down with all that weight. That hurts. Yeah, A.J.'s in big He's trouble. He is in deep trouble. This could be it. Jason Herzog right on top of the action. Yeah. He's trying to get it. Logan Storley finishes A.J. Matthews here in his home state of South Dakota. Look at the change of levels there, Mike. He gets up underneath him. That is what an elite wrestler does. He changes levels so fast you cannot stop what he does. Look at the heavy elbow strikes. Those are hurting. Logan Storley is opening up, going after A.J. AJ is doing nothing but trying to defend those shots. He can't stop them, and that's why Jason Herzog finally comes in and puts an end to this contest. And when they stood up after the fight, Logan Storley said to AJ Matthews, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the respect these men have for each other. Our official decision is coming up next. Ah, the Sanford Pentagon sold out here tonight, and they love that guy, Logan Storley, with the second round finish to make it official, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Herzog steps in, waves off the contest officially, three minutes, 56 seconds into round number two for the winner by TKO, still undefeated Logan. Here is Big John McCarthy with the storm. Congratulations, Logan Storley. That is the best performance you have ever had in a cage. It was an outstanding display of not only your progression as a fighter, but your conditioning as a fighter because you were putting a beat down on him and continued without stopping. Yeah, you know, I've really went back and watched the last two fights and looked on how to go about doing more damage. We worked on it the whole camp. I got to the rear naked, couldn't finish it. I got to my elbows, and I just did a lot of damage. And I spent the last eight weeks, every single day, getting ready for this situation right now, walking out in front of my home state of South Dakota. Thank you for coming out and putting on a show like that. And they deserve that, and I want to give it to them tonight. Let's talk about what happened. There was a knee that you threw. I know you were trying to hit the shoulder. How much respect do you have for A.J. Matthews that he didn't try to get himself out of that fight? He came back and put himself back in here against you without trying to just cop out on saying that that hurt him. Yeah, you know, I thought it was over. You know, I thought he was going to be done. And I have to give all the credit in the world to A.J. for coming back and going in, you know, continuing to fight. And, you know, I, I messed up. I was going for the shoulder and hit the head. But congrats to uh, AJ for continuing to fight because, you know, he, he, he did a manly thing by doing that. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't run from it. He, he got back up and fought. Exactly. Well, I want to tell you congratulations on the most impressive 
performance you, I have ever seen you in. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Logan Storley. Uh, one thing I want to say, I want to say uh, thank you to my Uncle Todd. He's fighting ALS right now, and he's at home watching. And this performance was for him, so thank you. Much love to Uncle Todd, and congratulations to Webster, South Dakota's Logan Storley. Brought to you by Dave & Buster's, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. Big difference here, little bit of age on Noad compared to Darian, but it's that reach. This is a guy coming from Bantamweight into Featherweight, and he's still got that much longer 74-inch reach to 69. Both men with 12 wins is not virtually identical. It is identical. <laughs> and here is Michael C. Williams. I couldn't read this. Had to. Ladies and gentlemen, live on Paramount Network, Miller Live presents Bellator MMA from Sioux Falls. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Sanctioned by the South Dakota Athletic Commission, Commissioner Lee Loaf, Chairman, Commissioner Mike Kilmer, Vice Chair, Executive Director Jennifer Staley. And now, the main event brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Introducing the blue corner at 5'9", weighing in 146 pounds even as a professional. 12 wins, 3 losses, hailing from Alfie Menashe Israel, presenting Noir Miho Laha. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot ten. The reigning Bellator bantamweight world champion returns to the featherweight division, weighing in officially at 145.2 pounds. His professional record: 12 victories, just one defeat. From Rockway, New Jersey, he fights out of San Diego, California. Introducing Darion the Wall Caldwell. The referee in charge of the action, Mike Beltran. We're gonna guess. All right, John, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch comes now if you want. The sound of the bell, come on out. Handle your business. Let's go. Mike Beltran, our referee. Non-title fight scheduled back. for three five-minute rounds. No ad la hot. All right, gentlemen, first round. Darian Caldwell. You ready to fight? Hell, let's go. Here we go. Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. Caldwell, the southpaw in the red gloves. Noad Lahat in the blue gloves. You'll notice as Darian's moving, look at how he starts to come down. He changes levels, and that's just a faint in, hey, I can change levels and come in on you. He's trying to set Noad up in that position. Good right hand. Touched him a little bit, but this is the wrestling pedigree right here, getting on top. That's what makes Darian Caldwell so difficult to fight. Darian's ability to get the top position on every fighter in both the Bantamweight and coming into the Featherweights, that's what separates him. You don't put him on his back. He doesn't go there. Good elbow early. It is. You see, Noad, he's doing things as far as opening his guard, getting his feet on hips. This is all good movement by Noad Lahat. Mr. Wonderful. His voice is heard. The wolf is ready to eat. Let's go. His teammate, Mr. Wonderful, has worked diligently with Darian Caldwell. He might be a little smaller, but man, those guys go. They love working out together, and Dominic Cruz has really been a huge influence 
on Darren Caldwell. You see Noed Lahat with an open guard. He's got a butterfly hook inside with that right leg. This is all good things that Noad's doing. As far as if I'm going to be on my back, I want to at least be in a position to be offensive. Control early by the bantamweight champion. Darian's opening up. He's landing some good shots as he's trying to posture up. But you're seeing Noah trying to change that angle. That angle is what can cause Darian Caldwell to fall into a trap. We talked about fighting off his back. Caldwell is aware of it, though. Oh, there's no doubt he's aware. <laughs> he's training with world-class guys all the time. And he's a world-class guy. The thing about Darren Caldwell is he doesn't get the credit he deserves for where he's at in the sport at this time. He also has said in the past he doesn't get the credit he deserves for his work ethic. You know, you don't get credit for work ethic because that's just dependent on who you are. If you're that guy that wants to be the best, then you have to outwork everybody. And if you're not, there's going to be someone out there that's outworking you, and they got a good chance of beating you. Hard work beats talent when talent refuses to, to work, work hard. hard. There you go. Told my kids in hockey that I've coached for well over a decade that many, many times. It's one of the greatest statements there is because I don't care how talented you are, if you do not work your butt off to make that talent improve, you will get passed by and beat. You don't win national championships in wrestling <laughs> no. without an incredible work ethic. That's it. Darren Collar was thinking of an axe kick there, kind of didn't make it all the way through. But there's good movement on Noad Lahat. You got to really be impressed with what Noad is doing off of his back. He's not settling, he's not just holding on. He's in closed guard right now, but right away, back to the open guard, getting that inside elevator hook. The butterfly hook is there. That's what you want to see off of your back with a fighter because now he can move himself into positions and set up submissions. And I made the, the comment going to break earlier that Noid Lahat said that Caldwell is more of a sprinter. I'm a marathon runner. I'm the better overall grappler. So to see Lahat have patience is not anything that would surprise anybody. Oh, no, that's exactly what you expect out of Noid Lahat because you can't expect to come in here. You are facing a guy who's a world champion. Don't come in here and expect to end this fight fast. That's not going to happen. Put him in hard situations. Make him work. Make him have difficulty so he's he's working at a pace that may not be comfortable for him. And eventually down the line, things are going to open up for you. Noid Lahad currently continues to serve in the Israeli Defense Forces Reserves. Mike Goldberg, Big John McCarthy, Jen Brown. Great to be here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for the very first time. Round number one of our main event of the evening between the bantamweight champion Darian Caldwell and Noad Lahad. This fight in the featherweight division. Partner Dewey Cooper in the corner of Noad Lahad said he will make a mistake. And that kick to the body right, will always be there. Let's Keep fight. an eye out for Let's it. Fight. Well, he's been giving good information, and also caught, you know, his his training bar, partner Brian Carway is telling him, you know, you can also V block, meaning push his head away with both arms, but you're always opening yourself up to take a shot with both arms extended. Round two. Caldwell in the red gloves, Lahat in the blue gloves. Darren Caldwell, 12 and one as a pro, nine and one inside the Bellator cage. Submitted by Joe Ty Minglo in a fight that he was dominant in up to that point where he made that one mistake. Oh, I was the referee of that yes, fight. I will tell you, you know, he was dominating that fight and I think got a little bit just lackadaisical shot in and stuck his head in a place not realizing how good baby Joe is with that guillotine. So I'm sure that Caldwell is glad that I'm retired as referee. I was a schlep rock for him. <laughs> Interesting to note that all six finishes in Caldwell's career have come in the first round. We are in round number two. Well, when guys are getting into that second, third round, fourth round, fifth round, they're getting a lot slipperier. It's a lot harder to get that submission unless you hurt them or you exhaust them.
know what? Obviously got hit by something. He's looking to see if he's bleeding because he's having a problem with his vision. That'll happen. You get hit with a shot, you kind of lose your ability to focus, and you're not sure exactly how bad the damage is. You know what? Lahat was a very busy fighter when he earned the victory in his home country of Tel Aviv. Of course, he said it was amazing to be on that first Bellator card in Israel. By the way, you were the referee for that Scott Cleave fight. He had six rounds in 10 weeks after the Labiano fight. Finished that fight with about 20 stitches. Had some time off before tonight, though. That was a hard fight against Labiano. Yeah, he took a lot of damage, but it was one of those gritty, grinding fights that you got to be impressed with a guy that never gives in, never stops. And that's what Noah Lott brings to the fight. And he was at home. Yep. He's not going to lose in front of his home people. That was uh, definitely not part of the uh, equation for him. Exactly. And in his one setback, he suffered that eye poke early. He ended up in the hospital post fight. So that was unfortunate in the loss to Henry Corrales. Just past the midway point of our main event. These are the shots that hurt you, though, when yes. you don't see them. And they're coming up underneath, shots. he's in trouble. He is. It is all over. Darian Caldwell with his first career second round finish. <laughs> and he is now 7-0 at 145 pounds. You have to be so careful when you decide to turn. You've got a guy like Darian Caldwell on your back. You're not going to see the punches. And he turned up the heat, John, just like that. He did, and it was exactly what you're supposed to do. Noad turns, gives his back. Now he's open for shots, and you see Darian hip riding him heavy and landing big shots. And you see Noad all of a sudden not responding, falling flat to the mat. That's the shot that hurts him right there. It comes up underneath. You never see it. It hurts anyone that gets hit by it. See Caldwell's family, I think they're a little bit happy with his performance here. Congratulations to them. Second career knockout for Darian the Wolf Caldwell. We will make it official. Coming up next. The Bantamweight champ wins at featherweight. His 10th win as a Bellator professional to make it official, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage referee, Mike Meltadon steps in, waves off the contest officially. Two minutes, 46 seconds into round number two. The winner by knockout, Darion the Wolf Caldwell. The Wolf will visit with Big John McCarthy. Congratulations, Darren Caldwell. That was an outstanding performance coming up to featherweight, displaying your skills against a super tough fighter in Noah Lahat. How are you feeling? I feel good. Noah was strong. Um, tonight was my night, you know. Um, I'm just grateful to be able to get back to a fight, you know. A lot of shit happens during the camp, so to be able to get back in the cage, it means a lot to me. You have now moved yourself up to the featherweight. You're still the Bantamweight champion. You got that strap around your waist. But who is it that you want to face next in this cage? Well, I'm looking for the armpit brothers. When I catch them, I'm going to deodorize you. Obviously, you talk a lot of shit. We seen the shit talker earlier, the gagger, get gagged tonight. So you keep talking shit. You keep talking shit, and you sign a dotted line when I got a fight. Really? Step up, bro. Step up. If you want, if you want these hands, Drop the contract, sign it against me, and let's get it in, because you know that belt is going to be mine. How important has it been to have the training partners that you have, like Phil Davis, Dominic Cruz, Jeremy Stevens, in your corner and working out with you every day? Look, Alliance MMA has the two best bantamweights in the world, OK? I hear TJ Dillashaw talking about he's the best bantamweight weight in the world, but you lost to a guy on the same roster as you, and you won't give him a rematch. Fight. Fight him. He, he should be giving you a rematch. Fight him, don't be a pussy. Phil Davis, you know he's coming for his belt back. So, hey, it's gonna be a good finish of the year. 
for Alliance and come, expect us to come out 2019 even stronger. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new stud in the featherweight division. Congratulations, Darian Caldwell.